With MSF Phantom, you can create payloads. So MSF Phantom allows you to create payloads for the Metasploit framework. So this can be a PHP, a Windows executable. It can be a Linux ELF file, Mac, an executable, DMG. So for different systems, and these payloads can then be run on the victim's computer and give you complete access to their system. And so if I type MSF Phantom dash payloads will show you all possible target systems. Let me make it full screen. So MSF Phantom dash L payloads, which will list all the possible payloads uh, you can create. So you'll see uh, you can create payloads for Windows systems. Uh, and if you scroll up, there is Linux in there and really lots of them. There's DLL. You see Linux here. So Linux payloads. Command line and Android, really all kind of systems. So the idea is that we use the program MS Venom to create a program, which the victim then will run, and it will give us complete access to their computer. So in order to do that, we type the command MSF Venom minus P with the payload. So the payload that we'll use here is of course a payload for the Windows system. And what we want to do is to create a reverse shell. Uh, so for example, we can create the shell for Windows. So we'll type Windows shell reverse TCP. Then we need to specify the IP address of our attacker's computer. The program will connect to our attacker's computer. So we need to know our IP address. You can do that using IP address show or if config. So IP address show will list your IP address. Now, if you're on the same network, you can use this IP address. If you're, uh, if, the, if the computer is not on the same network, you'll have to get a VPS like a digital ocean or vulture in order that the victim can connect to your computer. So you'll have to use Kali in the cloud if you want that. Uh, if you're not on the same network. So we have the IP address and then we close this. So we'll type lhost is with the IP address and then the port. So let's pick 4444. Then you need to specify the file format. So every Windows program is a .exe. So it has a X as extension for executable program. So this is different on every uh, system. For example, Android has APK, APK as runnable programs. Linux has ELF. Mac OS has DMG and Windows has X. So MSF Phantom needs to know what kind of executable it needs to make. So minus F X, then greater than, and then specify your file name. For example, bad.x. So that will create a program uh, the, the malicious program that the victim will then run. Now, you notice that we can create different shells. So, as payloads, we now specify shell reverse TCP, which is a basic Windows command prompt. But a more powerful prompt you can create is the interpreter shell. So, let's change this and we'll turn it into interpreter and reverse TCP. So, the interpreter shell is more powerful. So press enter with the commands and you'll see now it created the program. So you'll see file final size X. Uh, you'll see the executable has been created. So the next thing to do is to get this executable on the victim's computer. So you, maybe you put it on a USB disk or you send it by email or you send a link. So like download this one or something like that. Now, in this case, uh, it's named bad.exe, so probably the victim won't run any program that's named bad.exe, but you never know. Like, you can give it any name, for example, maybe we'll name it calc.exe, so that it looks like the Windows calculator. And uh, you'll see it creates a new program calc.exe, and it created that in the home directory. So you'll see calc.exe here as a malicious program, and really you can name it anything you want. So uh, Per program you uh, name you want, you can you can choose any name you want. 
the main idea is that the program goes to the uh, to the victim's computer, and the victim then has to run that program on his computer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the main idea is that the victim runs the program. Let me remove this file. So the main idea is that the victim r runs the program, but when it runs the program, it connects to your computer. So in order for it to connect, your computer needs to be listening for connections. You can do that using MSF console minus Q. So that will start the Metasploit console. Type use exploit multi handler. Then we need to specify the payload. So set payload with the same payload as you configured for your executable. Make it full screen. Now we need to set some options. So if you type show options, you'll see options here. We need to specify our uh, listener IP address and our port. So we set our IP address. And we set our port, which is the same port as the program we created earlier. So I closed the window, but the port we used before was 4444. You see, when we created the program, we used the same port. Now you can pick any port number between 1 and 6535, as long as you pick the same port number for when you're creating the executable. So in this case, 4444, and the same port listening. So those need to be the same, but you can pick any number. And next we click type run. So you'll see the Metasploit starts listening now. And once we start the program, it should give us complete access to their computer. So now you'll see we now have the interpreter shell and we have complete access into their computer. So for example, if I type the command there here, you'll see uh, it just doesn't fit into the screen, but you'll see we're in the desktop. We have the bat.exe here and the desktop ini file. And now we can do anything in his computer. Uh, for example, we can do all kind of file system commands. So uh, we can change the directory of course, like cd dot dot there, and like you can browse around in the computer, cd desktop there, those kind of things. You can output a file using the cat command, so you can read any file. You know, for example, we can use desktop.ini and it will output the contents of that file. So in this case, desktop.ini contains some weird information. But you can do that for any file, so cat will output the file. You can delete files, so if you say del and then some file name, you can delete it. You can edit files as well, if you type for example edit and with the file name. You can list files, so ls or dir. You can make directories. You see a directory has been created using our attacker's computer. You can remove directories. You see on the victim computer the directory disappeared. You can also download and upload files. For example, we can download desktop.ini to our computer. Now, if I go to the folder here, you'll see we have desktop.ini on our computer. Now, we can also upload files. So if we type upload from our computer, for example, we have the text file here. So that's just a regular text file. We can upload that to hit to the victim's computer. If we type upload, you see that file has been uh, created on his computer. You can get more privileges in the system, so you can try to become the administrator of the system. You can execute programs. So, for example, execute minus f and then the program program name. For example, we can start calculator or uh, notepad or whichever programs you want. You can capture the screen, so you can take a screenshot. If you just type screenshot, it will take a screenshot of the victim's computer. So if you go to the folder here, you'll see it took a screenshot uh, of the victim's computer. So you can do all kinds of uh, things. You can, for example, create new accounts or enable remote desktop, start capturing key presses. Really, you have complete control over the computer. Now, if you're curious about more commands, you can type question mark enter. 
and that will show you all commands in the Kali Linux or in the Metaperter shell. So for example, we can dump hashes. So those are password hashes, which you can use to crack the user's passwords on the system. You can play audio. So you can play audio sound on the victim's computer. You can do things with the webcam, like start a video chat or record a video. Some desktop things like con control the mouse or control keyboard presses. Uh, system commands, for example, you can restart the system or shut it down or other kind of things like execute commands that I showed you before. Uh, some networking commands and file system commands. So really you have complete control over the system. So if you type question mark, you can find more commands. Uh, so the interpreter shell is really one of the best shells because it allows you complete control over the system. There are some other shells like a reverse TCP shell, which allows you to run commands in the system, but you cannot do funny things like dump password hashes or maybe start a webcam or record sounds or those kind of things.